Hey guys, this is Snipey back again. So I actually lost uh, an entire episode. I recorded it, and it was me making that. And that's just a pretty average mob farm. If you guys want me to make a tutorial, let me know. But uh, I recorded it, and then the audio and the video got all screwed up, and I struggled with it for about an hour, and then just gave up because I wasn't. I don't have enough time to put into that. So, I can show you the mob farm down there really quick, assuming and hoping that no mobs... Oh, there's a creeper. Nope, not going to show you how the mob farm works. But, suffice it to say that mobs will float up this. They will not drown. They'll go up to the top. They will fall. I will punch them to death. I will get their items and their experience. So we can watch this creeper here. Just heading straight up it. Give it a second, and it's gonna fall. Okay. Oh, and sometimes they die, apparently. You know, I'm okay with that. Free items. I'll need to work on that a little bit. That'll be a later episode. Today. Oh, today I need a new chest. Um. There we go. And, uh, I'll put it there. That's a really ugly place for a chest. Okay. So today what I wanted to do was maybe do a little bit of cave exploring, get a little bit more iron, gold, stuff, and maybe start looking for some diamond. Because I'm used to having diamond. And, you know, at some point in the future we'll probably start on that. Another thing we might end up doing today is working on a tree farm. And then at some point we'll have to establish an actual house. I might do it inside that mountain. I still don't know. There are a few few ideas, but for now I'm hmm. One thing I could do, however, is make a wheat farm. I've got quite a few seeds in here if I remember right. What am I doing carrying around a half slab? I do not need a half slab. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, I got 16 seeds in here. So that's not enough for a great wheat farm. But once we get a wheat farm, we could start getting a farm farm up and running where we could have the passive mobs. Like chickens already got plenty of those. But, uh. Ugh, I don't know which one I want to do more. I will flip a coin, give me a second. Heads, I go explore the cave. Tails, I go and work on a wheat farm. Tails. Wheat farm it is. First things first, location. I choose the top of this hill. That looks like a good place to me. Oh, and I need food. Yeah, see, I need food, so wheat farm is a good thing. And, uh, probably just gonna level this out a little bit to have a nicer area for wheat farming after I get a little bit of food. And uh, a couple things I noticed about my last episode is that I'm going to need to be a little bit more animated because what I noticed is that my voice sounded a lot almost monotone. And I don't want to sound boring and monotone and bored with what I do because I enjoy this. So I'm going to make an effort to sound more enthusiastic and positive. Yeah, that's, that's the best New Year's resolution I've made so far. Okay, anything else? Oh, cool, I already had a chest. What anyway. Um, I know I'm missing something. Food. Yeah, that's why I came here in the first place. That works. Good breakfast here. That actually... Yeah, I'm going to be sparing with my food and only use it when I need to. Because I don't have a whole bunch to spare right now. Okay, I got this cleared out now. I'm just going to 
try and make it slightly more uniform and I'll uh, then I'll be able to put in some water and make it start looking a little bit more like a wheat farm so let's count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 yeah we got plenty in that direction so I just need to make sure 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and you know I'll just go 10 I might have gone 11 there, I'm not paying very good attention um, and this way I can have a little bit of area around the wheat farm that I can still do stuff in so 1, 2, 3, 4, ah oh shoot 5, 6, 7, 8 there we go That was done. There we go. Alright, and then that will supply water to these four. Four out. And then eight on the other side. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we'll do it here. And this will supply water to the other side. And, uh,. Now that I've got pumpkins, I might want to get a pumpkin farm up and running at some point too. And that shouldn't be too difficult to do. I just have a nice automated design I like to do with pumpkins and melons. And uh, I need pistons for it, and I don't have redstone yet, so that's holding me back a little bit right now. Uh, I'm going to grab a new shovel and a little bit of wood to put up some fences around there. Now I can go up and actually accomplish something. I still have my seeds. I don't have enough seeds to plant the entire crop of wheat yet, but I'll get there. Okay. Just gonna box it off back here. Okay. Two, three, Four. Hmm. That that works. And now, since you don't, uh, so long as you don't jump on them, uh, it won't make it untilled. I can walk all over this, and I don't have to worry about being super careful anymore. And that's that's nice. Okay, plant really quick here. And uh, the fastest way to plant, just in case you didn't know this, just hold down right click and go over the blocks. And we'll place them just as fast as you walk. See? I wonder if I have any bones. If I do, I can get seeds and stuff a little bit faster. Plus wheat, and I can start luring animals in. Um, aha, I do. Excellent. And there's no other real use for bones, so I'll just turn it all into bone meal. Now, something you have to watch out for when bone mealing. Is that a verb? Bone mealing? When bone mealing these wheat. wheats, uh, you can actually use a bone meal on a fully grown wheat like that, and it'll just waste it. So, I'm a lot more careful with these. I click each one. I probably don't need to, but better safe than sorry. And in no time I'll have a whole bunch of wheat. And then we harvest it all. There we go. And I'll get plenty of seeds back and plenty of wheat back. And I think you have a higher chance actually of getting seeds when you harvest wheat if you use a hoe to do it. But uh, I still got 47 seeds and I don't really need a whole bunch more. So I'll just finish hoeing all this here. And then once I get more seeds I'll be able to do a little bit more. 
But uh, this should provide me with a little over half of the field full of wheat. Yeah, see, there we go. So I'm just 17 seeds short. Okay. And you know, it's not anything grand, but it works. And then, of course, you can always move these blocks down farther in that direction and extend this farm infinitely long. Okay. And then, while I wait for the wheat to grow, I suppose I could get a tree farm of sorts up and running. And like most things I do, I have a very certain way I like to make tree farms, so you'll get to learn that way. It's loosely based off a way Etho made one a while ago. If you know his kind of general tree farm design. Although, he seems to vary and go through a whole bunch of different ones. I like this particular one, though, as it gathers most of the saplings and stuff back to, back to one point, so you don't have to run around and gather them all. Plus, if you do it with this kind of wood, then uh, you don't have to worry about big trees growing and making awkward shapes and stuff like that. So, I don't want to put it below anything because the trees need lots of room to grow. I think I could probably put it up on this hill without a problem. Oh, yeah. Sparing with the food. Okay. Or I could put it up on that hill. Since I'm already doing stuff out here, I'll be out in this area more often, I think. So I'll try and clear out a little bit of land around here. And I'll skip to when I'm done with that so you guys can see what I've accomplished. Okay, guys, so I just went a little bit overboard and cleared away quite a bit of said mountain slash hill. So we have a lot of flat space now, and I think... It's uh, 21 or 22 this way. I don't know how far it is this way, but I think this is big enough now for the tree farm I usually do. And uh, I'm going to show you how to build that. I'm just going to go to sleep here first so that we don't end up with troubles from mobs. Way. Okay. Also, while doing all that, I got quite a bit of seeds. So I'm going to finish planting this up. There we go. Now we have a full garden slash sweet farm. And I'll put some chests up here eventually. <clears throat> just let me and then of course I left this area here for a little slime killing thing just because I didn't want to accidentally get in the way with my tree farm because that's right where the center of my slime farm is so my tree farm let's see here I usually have a one high wall around the very edges and I think this time I'm going to just make the floor out of dirt you'll understand what I'm saying here in a second because that'll save me quite a bit of material so this is just going to be the ground level for the tree farm and then I'll have this kind of barrier up around it 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, I think is how wide it needs to be. So the space in the middle should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Nope. I need to go one farther at least. So at least to here. But I think to balance it, I'll put it there. And then just reduce one side here. Just like that. Okay. 
And then the same one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. And then we have the border. And I'll just line this up really quick. A few more cobblestone. This might use all my cobblestone. It's a rather large build. Okay, and then the center one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm going to dig out a channel here. That'll go all the way. Center of this channel, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Dig it out one further. We'll go in that direction. You'll see. Okay. Now we build the area which the trees are actually on. And I don't plant trees all over this ground here, no. Um, how I do this is that I count one, two, three from the diagonal. And uh, I build it on this level here. I'll just put one in each of these corners. One, two, three. It's on the fourth. Right, yeah. Okay. Just do this in each of the corners. One, two, three. And the last corner. One, two, three. Then you fill in the gaps. Once you've filled in the gaps, this ring here is actually what all the trees are going to grow on. That's the surface for them. Okay. And I usually connect it with half slabs. Yeah, let's just get a crafting table up here. I'll probably have one around here anyway. Okay. And then make a few half slabs. Uh, that's good. Okay. Sure. That, that looks good to me. And I'll also get a chest up here. I'll need one eventually. Okay. There we go. Shove those into there. Now, place water, water, water. And you just fill this in. Some of you may have already kind of picked up on what I'm doing here. So that will push anything that lands in it all the way to this here. Then, do the same thing on this side. Just about there. That'll push anything to there. Then we do it in the center. I hate how the water glitches like that, but... Oh well. I'll live. There we go. And there. So now, as you can see, anything that falls into here, like saplings from leaves, anywhere around, except for if it falls on the ring, but that doesn't make up very much of the space. So all of that that falls there will push right into the center, and those currents will push it into the very center. Then I'll also cover both sides of this, outside and inside with torches to make sure the trees always have enough light to grow. And I'll usually end up using bone meal anyway, but now we're gonna go down into where they fell. Never dig straight down. And we dig it out. Almost there, I'm sure. 
Come on. There we go. Ah, it's because it's significantly lower rate. Okay. Well, let's count how far we'll need to fill this. Grab some water. So once they all get pushed to the center, uh, from there, we use this channel that's going to be here. One, two, three, four. Let's place this while I still can. Five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I'll place this one. That also does not quite get them there. And I don't want to bring it all the way out. <sighs> I wish I had a piston. But I don't. So what I'll do... I guess I'll just put another water stream there. And put the collection point right around here. And then uh, I think I might fill in right up in here. And mobs can't spawn in water, I don't think, but for aesthetic purposes, we'll make it clean. There we go, and then the items will just I'll make kind of a drop zone here. Clear it all out, make it look fancy. Oh, there goes my shovel. It's like the fourth shovel I've gone through. Because I cleared out that entire hill. And, uh... I'll need to get in there to place the water. I'll get a pressure plate... to stop the water flow. And I'll fill in the surrounding area here with cobblestone, just so it looks a little bit more official. I might also do kind of half slabs all over so that I can easily run in and out. Okay, if I did a half slab there... Yeah, yeah, that'd work. Let's clear some of the grass away from here, just because it looks quite busy right now. Okay, and then I'm also just going to replace these edges here with cobblestone so it's easier to see from farther away. That is not what I wanted to do. Okay, it's becoming night so i got to hurry here. Make a few half slabs. Okay. There we go. Now I can just kind of run in here, grab it really quick, and leave. And I'll put the water back in. Not back, but into there so that the items can actually flow as soon as I turn it to day here. Okay. And it's probably about episode length here. So once I finish this up, I'll plant a couple saplings around the edge there. And I'll finish up. Okay. In case you don't know exactly what's going on here with the pressure plate there, what it does, oh, I guess I don't need it since the water length is just perfect, but uh, what it does so item is if I put it back further in, the water stops there and the items just get dropped neatly onto it. So it's a good way of stopping water. Almost there. There we go. And I'll clear this out as well. There we go. That looks nice. Hmm. Let's 
just trying to find something that looks nice. That looks good. I like that. Clear all this annoying tall grass out. Maybe it doesn't bug other people, but I just don't think it looks very good. And I don't like it. Okay. Wheat farm's doing pretty well, except for the wheat <laughs> I just barely planted. Um, and then I don't have very many saplings, of course. I'm going to go get a few saplings, and then I'll plant them here and quickly show you the tree farm in action. Okay, I gathered all the redwood trees over there, dark wood, whatever you want to call it. And I got 33 wood, but only 8 saplings, so a little bit disappointing, but still enough. I guess that should be here. Just give a quick overview of how the tree farm looks. See, and then there will be saplings all around this ring, and of course there will also be torches, which I'll put up, and you'll probably just see them next episode. I'll do that off camera. But uh, when they grow, please tell me I've got some bones. Okay. You end up with just kind of almost a ring of trees around the thing. And, you know, not all of them will grow. They won't grow into each other and stuff. But then you can just run around, harvest it really easily. And all the saplings and stuff. And any logs that you might miss. will fall down into the water and be pushed to the collection point. So you don't need to worry about trying to get saplings really carefully to replace the trees you just cut down because it all ends up in one place. It's just convenient for me. and I like that. So if you've got a tree farm you like better and you think I should make, then let me know and I'll take a look at it. I'm always looking to do things better. So if you think you've got a better way of doing something than me, let me know. Honestly, I want to know what you guys think. You can see the saplings there. I don't have to worry about gathering those. Just uh, see as soon as these leaves degenerate. There's a word that I can't think of right now. As soon as these leaves go away, yeah, see, sapling falls into the water. Those two will as well. And they'll end up at the collection point. And I think I'm going to end up with a few more saplings than I started with. Since uh, it does appear that leaves decaying, that's the word. If you just let them decay naturally, it looks like we're getting a few more saplings than if you break every leaf that you can. So, it takes them a little while to get to the collection point, but I'm okay with that. It's hard to make them move any faster without... I guess you could do some sort of ridiculous piston contraption to just kind of shoot them out to the other end, but seems like a waste of time and resources to me. As you can see, this one here is actually just going to fall straight onto there. And so you would lose that one, but if you consider there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, so there are 40 blocks out of this uh, 17 by 17 area where they will fall and not go into the water. So that's not bad. See like this one? Straight in. So, although you will lose a few, it's pretty much automatic. So let's just run and check. See, we got one here. And I'm sure there are more on the way. I can't see down that tunnel very far, but... I know that at least a few dropped. Alright. Well, wheat farm and tree farm today. That pretty much wraps up today's episode. So, thank you for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. Really appreciate any of those. So, thank you again for watching. And I will see you next time.